If you like the video, feel free to subscribe. It would really help the channel, and we have battle reports, boarding actions, and list videos every week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. This list is going over a new Grey Knights competitive list after the October 2024 balance update. I have had some comments asking for a list with Canis Rex. He has gone up by 15 points to a big 450, but I was able to save that and more with the Terminators, who went down 10 points for 5. The Grey Knights didn't really gain much from the balance update. The top factions who were beating the Grey Knights, like Sisters and 1000 Sons, have been brought down a peg or two, so that will help them. Grey Knights are primed to fill the hole these factions have left behind as one of the top factions in the game. I will go over the list with a breakdown of how the Teleport Strike Force benefits each unit in the list. Now let's go through the Grey Knights Army Rule and the Detachment Rule for the Teleport Strike Force. The Army Rule is called Teleport Assault. If your Army Faction is Grey Knights, at the end of your opponent's turn, you can select a number of Grey Knights units excluding units that are in engagement range of one or more enemy units. The maximum number of units you can select depends on the battle size. Combat Patrol 1, Incursion 2, Strike Force 3, Onslaught 4. Once you've made your selections, remove those units from the battlefield. In the reinforcement step of your next movement phase, set each one of those units up anywhere in the battlefield that is more than 9 inches horizontally away from all enemy models. Any units that are not on the battlefield at the end of the battle count as destroyed. So this is pretty much an army-wide uppy downing Then we have the Teleport Strike Force Detachment Rule, Teleport Shunt. Each time a Grey Knight's unit with the Deep Strike ability advances, do not make an advance roll. Instead, until the end of the phase, add 6 to that unit's movement characteristic and that unit can fly. Now on to the 6 stratagems. I won't go through these word for word, just a rough breakdown of what they do and how they help our army. The first one is Death from the Warp for 1 CP. In your movement phase, you can select one unit that has arrived from Deep Strike or use that Teleport Assault ability. That unit will then have the Assault ability and then plus one to the hit roll for the rest of the turn. So not the phase, the turn. That one can be quite powerful. The next is Haloed in Soulfire for 2 CP. In your movement phase, you can give one unit the Lone Op within 18 inches ability. It used to be 12, but it has changed to 18 in the June 2024 data slate. Then the Detachment Defining Stratagem, Mist of Dimos. For 1 CP, in your opponent's movement phase, just after an enemy unit ends a normal advanced fallback move within 9 inches of one of their Grey Knight's units, we can then either do a normal move of 6 inches, or if that unit has the Deep Strike ability, you can pick it up and put it in Strategic Reserves. You cannot select a unit that is within engagement range of one or more units though. Prognosticated Arrival, and this one you can use to steal objectives and do some funky things with. So this is in your movement phase, one Grey Knight Psycho unit with the Deep Strike or Teleport Assault ability. You can Deep Strike within 3 inches away from all enemy models. You can no longer charge, but you can still shoot, and like I said, you can use this for all kind of shenanigans. Next is Radiant Strike for 2 CP. It is quite expensive and situational. You kind of need a big unit with a lot of attacks. It's in the fight phase until the end of the phase. Melee weapons equipped by models in that unit with the Psychic ability also have the Devastating Wounds ability. So that's all of our Nemesis Force weapons. And last, and used a lot throughout the game, is True Silver Armor for 1 CP. And this is the Grey Knight's Armor of Content. So until the end of the phase, each time attack targets your unit, worse than the armor penetration of that attack by one. And that is all the stratagems onto the unit breakdown of the list. And here is the list itself. It's quite simple, it's pretty easy to build other than Canis Rex, comes to 2,000 points exactly. Our Warlord is a Brotherhood Librarian with that Sigil of Exigence Enhancement for 30 points and the Combi Weapon. I have two more Brotherhood Librarians, both with the Combi Weapons and no enhancements. Then we have four five-man squads of Terminators. All four have an Ancient Banner, a Narthosium, and a Psy Cannon. Then we have three units of five-man strike squads. All three have one Psy Cannon and a Close Quarters weapon. And then our one allied unit is Canis Rex. So it's pretty simple. It's only three Grey Knights data sheets and then Canis Rex. But hopefully it'll be pretty potent on the tabletop. Now we'll move on to the units in the list and we'll start with our Warlord first. 
This librarian with his sigil of exigence is our warlord model, also one of the three brotherhood librarians in the list. The Frostfire name came from the snowy bases I have my Grey Knights on, plus the three librarians which fire range attack. The Brotherhood Librarian has a movement of 5, a toughness of 5, 2 up save with a 4 up invulnerable save, 5 wounds, 6 leadership, and OC 1. I do have the combi weapons on the librarians. We're looking for that anti infantry 4 is the big reason why I took this weapon. Then you have the psychic attack, purge soul. You can either make it focused. Focus attack will make it hazardous and precision though. Then for the melee weapon, like all the melee weapons, you have a nemesis force weapon. The only difference with this one is it is AP1 instead of AP2 like every other nemesis force weapon in the army. We'll look at the abilities now. Sanctic Hood, while this model is leading a unit, models in that unit have a 4-up feel no pain to psychic attacks. Pairs well with Vortex of Doom. In your shooting phase, you can select one enemy unit within 18 inches and visible to this psyker. And roll 1d6. On a 1, the Psyker's unit suffers a d6 mortal wounds. On a 2 to 5, the enemy unit suffers 2d6 mortal wounds. On a 6, the enemy suffers a big 2d6 mortal wounds. And the reason Sanctic could pair as well with this, because if we do roll a 1, we will have a 4-up feel no pain against those mortal wounds that we do put on ourselves. The big selling point of these librarians is the mortal wounds potential getting around the low anti-tank damage of the Grey Knight's infantry units. The Sanctic Hood ability for the 4 Feeling of Pain against Psychic Damage, this is quite useful since a lot of the Mortal Wounds abilities in 10th are Psychic Damage based. This includes if we roll a 1 on the Vortex of Doom, or a 1 on the Hazardous Roll for the Purge Soul Focus Witchfire attack. And the Terminator Squad has a lot of the same stats as the Terminator Librarian. 5 Movement, Toughness of 5, a 2-up save with a 4-up Invulnerable, 3 wounds, 6 up leadership, and OC of 1. So we have the 1 side cannon in the unit. It has 24 inch range, 3 attacks, hitting on 3s, strength 8, AP 1, damage 2. Then for our melee weapons, we have the Nemesis Force weapons. 4 attacks for each one of these Terminators, hitting on 3s, strength 6, AP 2, damage 2. And their abilities, they have Deep Strike and Hammer Hand, and Hammer Hand gives the unit lethal hits if we charge that phase. And when you combine the Terminators and the Librarians together, now we will have a tanky unit who can deep strike within 3 inches with the Prognosticated Arrival that can either use Mist of Dimos if a unit moves within 9 inches of this unit, or if the enemy unit targets them, the Librarian can use the Sigil of Exigence Enhancement to do a once per game redeploy. And let's take a look at that enhancement that we do have on the Librarian. The Sigil of Exigence. Once per battle in your opponent's shooting phase, when the bear's unit is selected as a target of a ranged attack, you can remove the bear's unit from the battlefield and then set it back up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than 9 inches horizontally away from all enemy models. If the bear is no longer an eligible target, your opponent can then select new targets for any attacks that had targeted the bear's unit. A unit we can use to steal objectives or do secondary actions with, while remaining generally safe from a counterattack. With all the melee weapons in this unit, with strength 6 and damage 2, we need to be very careful which enemy units we do decide to engage with. This list will want to be the one charging, since the unit has lethal hits on the charge from the hammer hand ability. And all four Brotherhood Terminator squads will have a Narthosium equipped in the unit, making this list very necrony, with one destroyed model per unit returned to the unit in our command phase. Four Terminator units, that's going to be a lot of Terminators to come back. Now let's talk about the other two squads of Brotherhood Librarians with the Brotherhood Terminators. Instead of saying the same thing for this unit as the last, let's look at the stratagems and what can be used on these Librarian Terminator units. Mist of Dimos from 1CP is such a great stratagem for keeping these units alive. The key is to only give the opponent one or two units that they can get in range of, force the opponent into having to move units within 9 inches of the Grey Knight's unit then teleport it out of harm's way with the Mist of Dimos. Radiant Strike for 2 CP is an expensive stratagem. It does give us devastating wounds on the unit's melee weapons, 24 total attacks, hitting on 3s, and 6s will be lethal if we charge, and you also have the Librarian's attacks in there as well. We can spike, but most of the time, it will not be a large amount of devastating wounds done to the target. This is useful when we do need to take out one of those Toughness 12 vehicles or monsters, with these units, we can use Vortex of Doom with a Librarian, charge in for lethal hits, and then spend 2 CP for devastating wounds in melee. And that, most of the time, should get it done against a tough, tough vehicle. True Silver Armor from 1 CP 
will make these two plus and four plus and vulnerable save even harder to kill by adding minus one AP to incoming attacks in the opponent's shooting or the fight phase. Very effective at making anything but anti-tank weapons bounce off this unit. Haloed and Soulfire for two CP. This is another expensive stratagem. It can be used to keep a unit safe doing a secondary action out in the open that is more than 18 inches away from enemy units. Make sure to look what can move into range in the opponent's next turn before we commit the big 2 CP though. There's no point of using this and then you have 3 or 4 tanks that can drive in within that 18 inches and shoot you anyways. Death from the warp for 1 CP. This stratagem gives the unit assault and plus 1 to hit until the end of the turn. Until the end of the turn makes a big difference. The shooting in these units is nothing special, the side cannon and the librarian being the most potent. We can ignore the assault portion of the stratagem, do a normal move, shoot and then charge. The Brotherhood Terminators shooting in melee attacks will be hitting on 2s instead of the normal 3s. Unit now has 24 melee attacks with the librarian and the Brotherhood Terminator squad hitting on a 2+, plus, and that is spicy. Prognosticated arrival for 1 CP, this is another strong stratagem for this detachment. We can use it to get line of sight on some enemy units to get some shooting off, but more importantly, we can use the OC-12 of this unit to steal objectives, drop within three inches of enemy models to try to steal and deny our opponent's points. We can be sneaky if we have some CP, so you missed of Dimos for one CP, and then you rapid ingress that very same unit at the end of the opponent's movement phase, so they move at you within nine inches, you missed of Dimos, at the end of the turn, you rapid ingress that same unit down somewhere on the table that is more advantageous to us. The key to this unit will be using our army rules to gain points. Use these units to get the enemy army out of position. The detachment rule combined with the army rule gives a much quicker army than a full list of terminators may seem. Let's talk about our lone terminator group with no attached character. This is our only terminator unit who does not have a brotherhood librarian attached to it. They still will have access to lethal hits on the charge from that hammer hand ability on the Terminator's data sheet, making them a tough and threatening unit for us. Like the other three Brotherhood Terminator squads, the unit has the Agent's Banner to give an extra OC to every model in the unit. With a total OC of 10 and with no character in this unit, it will be a great choice for stealing objectives from the opponent. The Narthoseum in the unit as well to bring back a model in our command phase. I do have a Psy Cannon in the unit, I could put an incinerator in there instead, but for now I want to stick with all Psy Cannons to give the list a bit of medium damage shooting to take out some key targets. Also a great unit to use for risky plays where Mist of Dimos or True Silver Armor may not save them. Without the librarians in the unit, this will be a bit more of a utility unit being the cheapest and most expendable Terminator squad. On to our three strike squads. These three units will be used to sticky objectives with their sanctifying ritual ability. They are also great for doing secondary actions since they do not need to stand on objectives all game. Not a big damage dealer with only one side cannon in the unit and three attacks per model with the nemesis force weapons. No invulnerable save, but with a two plus save they are hard to shift, especially if we use true silver armor for one CP to make them even harder to shift. Also the only units in the list with a native 2 OC we can use Prognosticated Arrival for 1 CP to deep strike within 3 inches of enemy models to steal objectives from our opponent. 3 of these will really be a hassle for the opponent on the board, drop them down all over the place, stealing objectives and making them sticky in our command phase. Canis Rex is our answer to not having any high damage, put your brown pants on, units in the Grey Knight side of the list. Canis Rex did receive a 15 point increase, bringing him to a total of 450 points he is still more than usable as a big knight ally. Even more so as the grey knights who lack a big scary smash your units to pieces centerpiece model, Canis does solve some of those issues. He does have his downsides, but if we're using him right, he can be a huge boon for our list. Canis Rex's two abilities are great since he does not need to be in a knight's faction list for them to work. The first one is Legendary Freeblade. Use a stratagem for zero CP. We can only use it on those core stratagems like CP Reroll, but it is a good stratagem for him to use anyways. The next ability is Chain Breaker, so he has critical hits on 5s for his ranged and melee, which pairs well with the sustained hits one on his ranged and melee weapons. Canis Rex answers the, how are we going to kill that question when we see tough monsters or vehicles across the table. 
His shooting from the Chainbreaker Laz Impulsor can be either anti-tank with that D6 shots, Strength 14, AP3, Damage 4 shots, or anti-infantry with the 2D6 shots, Strength 7, AP1, Damage 2. Both of the blast and sustain hits 1, then hit on a 2 plus on top of that. He becomes a very reliable unit in shooting. We can even use the legendary free blade ability to CP reroll the amount of shots for 0 CP if needed. Then we have the melee from Freedom's Hand. Once again, the weapon has two different profiles, Strike or Sweep. The Sweep profile with 10 attacks, hitting on 2s, Strength 10, AP 2, Damage 3, Sustain hits 1. A light 2 infantry killer right there. Then the profile that makes the enemy models regret their choices in life. The Strike profile. 5 attacks, Sustain hits 1, Hit on 2+, plus, Strength 20, AP 3, Damage 9. Now pair all of that sustained hits 1 in the shooting and the melee with the Chainbreaker ability for critical hits on 5. Sustained hits 1 on 5+, plus instead of 6+, plus for that Freedom's Hand Strike Profile is a big problem for the enemy. Now for the game plan for this list. This is a points first list, meaning it is not meant to kill everything on the board and then go in on the points. It is a crafty list with lots of utility, 3 units who can stick objectives, with the three units of strike squads. The four Terminator units will be used to get primary objective points, as well as pressure the enemy off objectives and or block the enemy movement, only to mist of Dimos away if they get close. The Brotherhood Terminators may struggle into large, tough targets, but they can threaten them with the Librarian paired with Stratagem support. Then the Brotherhood Terminator squad does have the Hammered Hand ability to give the unit lethal hits on their Nemesis Force weapons when they have charged a unit that phase. We want to hold Canis Rex back as a threat, let the enemy get closer before pushing Rex out, while we use the Grey Knights to grab as many objectives as possible. In later turns, we can even bait the enemy into shooting Canis Rex instead of our Grey Knights. Now for my final thoughts. I will be playing this list on the channel sometime soon. The more I play Grey Knights, the more I like the playstyle. This list gives us a lot of board control with the three five-man strike squads. Every Grey Knights unit in the list will have at least OC-10. Great for stealing objectives with prognosticated arrival to deep strike within three inches of enemy models. Canis Rex gives some strange mix of utility and attack, the utility being that it gives the opponent hard choices during a game. The Grey Knights Terminators do not do a lot of damage, they are however hard to kill with small arms fire. Rex makes the opponent choose between using their high damage guns on the Grey Knights that are scoring points, or the giant stompy robot that is coming for them with bad intentions. This list should be hard to deal with while scoring high points. Subscribe for weekly battle reports, list videos, and other Warhammer 40k content. Thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by.